What's up guys, it's Emily. So right now I'm going to be answering your guys' questions about female hygiene and sex. Um, I asked on my Instagram for you guys to give me questions that you have and I have about like 18 questions that I grabbed randomly. So before I get started, I wanted to let you guys know that I changed my YouTube name. It is no longer Yo M. Um, I feel I honestly felt like I needed a new change and I, I was asking as a poll what I should do like what name I should change it to I gave you guys like three options and a lot of you guys voted for the one I wanted which I was so happy is so my new name is life with M I just feel like this is like the perfect title especially for my channel because you guys are going through life with me and you guys are gonna still go through life with me um, and see so much stuff that's going to happen in the near future and things like that. So I feel like this title is definitely perfect for my channel. Um, but before I get started, give this video a fat thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to always be notified with my videos. Comment um, more Girl Talk video ideas that you guys genuinely want me to talk about because I really love doing this type of series with you guys and another thing is that there is going to be a special series coming to my channel just wait on it um I'm so excited for this to be coming to my channel I actually thought of this idea and I think it's going to be a really cool series for my channel um but yeah let's jump right into the video okay so uh, the first question do you prefer pads, tampons, or Diva Cups? Number one, I don't know what Diva Cups are, and I don't want to know what they are. Number two, I prefer pads. I've always used pads since a little girl. Um, I did try out tampons, um, I think for like a year, or like a year and a half, two years, because I, I started realizing they were pretty helpful when you went to go play gym, or like if you wanted to go swimming and stuff like that. But then I started seeing articles and things on the news that it is not good for you, especially it doesn't like help with like your flow, like your flow is supposed to like naturally just come out of your body. And I feel like tampons is like kind of like a blockage in a way, like it just like, it just kind of like, I don't know how to explain it, but I prefer, preferably like to use pads. Next question, number two. What to do about a UTI? Um, so I had two UTIs, one last year and actually one recently. And the first time I ever had a UTI, I had to go, like, based off my symptoms. I only really had back pains. I wasn't, like, urgent, like urgently using the bathroom or anything like that. Um, I just generally had really, really bad back pains. Actually, I did have symptoms. I had back pains, I threw up, and I know this sounds gross, but during the nighttime, I didn't even know I did this, but I peed on myself, and I, I was like getting up to go use the bathroom, and I couldn't even hold it, and I peed on myself, and I'm not ashamed to say that, because this is what females go through. Um, so what to do about a UTI, what I first did is, I went to CVS and got like these test strips to see if like you have like a yeast, bacteria infection, whatever the case is, and it's supposed to change color, if it changes like a purple, I think that that's the color that it says shows on the box, if it turns purple, it's positive that you do have a UTI or some, of some sort. So, personally, I would suggest if you feel like you're having symptoms of a UTI, just go to the doctor because you'd rather just be safe than sorry. They could test your urine there and they could just automatically put you on antibiotics. Um, but people like me, like I barely had, sometimes like the recent one I had, I didn't have any symptoms besides back pain. I didn't have like the urgency to use the bathroom or anything like the first time I did. And... I didn't even know I had one until I went to CVS and got another test strip and sure enough that same day I went to the doctor to get treated and it comes to find out I had a kidney infection. So make sure you're taking care of yourself because UTIs can be caused from anything whether you're from being like having sex whether it's new underwear whether it's a certain product 
like a product you're using to clean down there and stuff like that. It could be caused from anything. Number three, what are some good affordable perfumes and lotions? So, generally, I prefer going to Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body. Um, the reason why is because usually when they have like their annual, semi-annual sale and stuff like that, that's when I go. I don't go to spend about $14.50 or $12.50 on lotions and perfumes. That's just not my cup of tea. I like to get a good sale. So usually from Victoria's Secret when they do have that semi-annual sale, I usually get like the lotions and perfumes for like $5, $6. And usually for Bath & Body, they are on sale for like $3.75. And that is worth my money, especially your girl's not paying 12, 12 to 14 dollars for one perfume. Not happening. So I personally prefer going to Bath and Body when there's sales. Um, but if you prefer, like if you're at like a dollar store and you smell like a really good perfume, get it. But make sure you read like the ingredients in it just because sometimes with me, my skin is very sensitive to certain things and we don't want like allergic reaction to happen. Number four, how do you become comfortable with your body during sex? I feel like this is like a really good question. Um, especially for somebody like me, I've always had like, uh, that was like the first thought before I ever lost my virginity was because like I was so insecure with myself. I was like, nobody's gonna accept me. Nobody's gonna accept my stretch marks. Nobody's gonna accept my cellulite. Nobody's gonna accept my rolls or anything like that. And honestly, you have to work on yourself first before you let another person see all of you, if that makes sense. So what I started doing was I started telling myself you're beautiful and like I started like I used to like okay this is, sounds really funny but I used to sit naked with like my undies and bra in the the mirror and I used to write with dry erase markers on my mirror every beautiful thing that I find about myself and I feel like that has helped my confidence so much it changed me to wearing crop tops and it, it changed my thought process and that's when I finally got comfortable with let, letting another human being take control of my body or letting another person seeing my body. Um, my boyfriend, he has always loved all of me, which I'm so blessed because um, I never had a person that genuinely liked me, like my body. It was more of like my personality. And when I first met my boyfriend, he accepted all of he accepted all of me and he made me feel so freaking comfortable um and that's you honestly have to feel comfortable and trust the person before you let them in like that um so i'm genuinely happy that i i found somebody that like makes me feel comfortable and happy with myself and stuff like that and actually builds my confidence as much as i'm doing it on my own part so you just have to find a good partner to do it with, whether it's like a friends with benefits, significant other, best friend, I don't know what you prefer, but personally, you got to find the right person and make sure you're loving yourself before you let another person love you. Number five, how to smell good all day. Okay, the number one tip I'm going to give you guys is deodorant deodorant this is one of my favorite deodorants this smells like baby baby powder that's literally what it says powder um deodorant is like so important you sweat whether you're at the gym whether it's just a really hot day out you honestly sweat and you don't even know you're sweating so putting this on like three times a day really helps with like your armpits because some people be not putting their um deodorant on and The results are there, honey. So make sure you're wearing your deodorant. Another thing is carrying a perfume with you, whether it's like a travel size perfume, um, just to make sure like you're smelling good, whether you like to spray it like several times throughout the night. Because sometimes like female perfume, this smells like can um candy apple. Sometimes like female perfume doesn't last all day and sometimes you just gotta respray yourself 
Another thing is make sure, um, like if you have gum on you, like if you feel like your breath stank, like after um, eating like a certain meal, make sure you have like a good peppermint gum with you if you feel like your breath stinks or something like that. Um, another thing is wipes. Um, I personally like to carry like a travel size wipes with me because like if you're on a date or like if you're sweating or something like that you want to clean yourself down there especially if you have like if you're like nervous and you have like you know the worst type of bathroom session wipes is very preferable especially like if you're out on a date so definitely use wipes um feminine wipes or baby wipes whatever you prefer because it keeps you clean it makes you stop from smelling so those are my four tips um, on how to smell good all day. Okay. Six. <laughs> Should it be a guy's responsibility to bring a condom? I freaking love this question, okay? I love this question. And what I'm about to say is absolutely not. It should be your responsibility and his responsibility, but more of your responsibility because if you want that type of protection and you want to not get an STD or get pregnant, make sure you're carrying one in your wallet because honestly, condoms are actually really important, especially when you're sexual, like if you're, you're just meeting a person and things lead, lead to one, one thing to the next, it is definitely important to carry one. Um, a guy shouldn't be responsible for a condom, honestly, like they should, but sometimes guys will make an excuse, be like, I don't have the money, or I totally forgot, like, let's just do it like this. No, because you got to think about yourself at the end of the day and, like, the um, circumstances that could happen, you know? So make sure you're being responsible with yourself and not having to rely on another person for your responsibilities. Okay, seven, good products to use when you're on your period. Okay, wipes, 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 wipes is very important. Um, either baby wipes or feminine wipes. Um, carrying pads in your purse is definitely important. Um, sometimes people like to use like the, um, the douche or like the feminine wash for down there. Personally, I, I used it for a while and I started noticing like a difference, but like using it all the time I heard is not really good. So if you prefer to use those type of things, then use it. But um, what else? Yeah, just make sure you're carrying wipes because some like personally, my period is definitely heavier than the normal and I usually looks it looks like a crime scene and I prefer using wipes because tissue just makes everything like I feel like I have to keep rolling and rolling and roll until like it's done and it's not messy anymore and make sure you're changing your pad as much as possible because it, it definitely definitely helps when you change your pad excessively <laughs> um Hey, is it weird? Okay, this is like a really interesting question because I feel like this is things this this question is definitely not talked about especially for like the female body. Is it weird to masturbate? Honestly, people find it weird. People hate this topic to talk about it. But honestly, it's not weird. Like, I'm honestly, like, it's really not weird for me to even talk about this. I feel like it's such a natural thing for the human body. Sometimes, like, if you're single or, like, you just need to, like, love yourself. Like, sometimes I feel like loving yourself is also a part of that because loving yourself is, like, exploring with your body and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, sometimes people... Even that, like, sometimes people need to explore with their body to know what they really like. Do they prefer men or do they prefer women? And that's okay. Like, explore with your body. Like, a lot of people don't talk about, like, this type of stuff. But it's definitely not weird. So don't feel like it's weird because it is a natural thing. And if, even if you're young, like, and you're watching this, even if you're young, 
I prefer you to do that than having sex at the age of 12, honestly. Just explore your body and love yourself because at the end of the day, it is not weird whatsoever. And I'm so glad somebody brought this up because this question is so like blocked off and like pushed under the rug because people think it's not the normal. But it's okay for guys to do it, but it's not okay for females to do it. It is absolutely okay for females to do it. That's all I got to say. Okay. Nine. Does the first time hurt? Okay. So this is an actually really interesting question because everybody has a different first time. And personally, for me, it did not hurt. Um... And people, at first, when I told them that, they said it's, like, weird that I didn't hurt because, like, some people bleed or some people, they just couldn't deal with the pain or things like that. But it's crazy. Like, I was reading this article and, like, people's, like, responses to this and, like, how everybody's body is different. Like, and there are some females like me that don't have pain for the first time, which I was kind of blessed that I didn't have any because... That was my biggest fear was like that type of situation because I heard it from so many people. But then when it was not for me, I thought I was weird for that, for not having pain. But personally for me, it didn't hurt. It just, I guess, depends on your body. And yeah, like, I, I don't know how much, what much more I could say for that. But yeah. Ten. What do you do when your significant other is in the mood when you're not? Um, so, I feel like this is another good question. I definitely wrote these down because, like, some of these questions were, like, really interesting topic to talk about. When your big significant other is in the mood and you're not, I feel like they should respectfully, res like, really respect you for not being in the mood. Like, or you could, like, tease them and be like, oh, I'll, oh, we'll do it the next day or this time the third. But if you're really not in the mood, just be honest with them and tell them, like, babe, I'm not in the mood. Like, or whatever, whoever this person is, whether it's your significant other or, like, friends with benefits, if you're not in the mood, they have to respect that. And if they don't respect that, then you shouldn't be with them, um, honestly. Like, the thing with, like, people... It's not always about sex with when it comes to, like, a relationship. It's it's so much more than, like, the physical touch. It's so much, it's so much like, the emotional feeling to it and the, 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 the lovely dates and, like, things like that. It's so much more than sex, guys. But you guys could, like, literally have, a, like, a game night and just tell them, like, oh, I prefer, like, let's have a movie night. And... And if they don't really respect that, you should not be with them. Like, just make sure you like, compromising. Because if you guys are not compromising, then it's definitely going to be, like, difficult for you guys to continue a relationship. Because, personally, like, I'm honest with my boyfriend. If I'm not in the mood, he respects me 100%. We'll have, like, a marathon of TV shows that night. And I, I, that's what I love is, like, things like that. Like... You respect me and we watch our favorite shows perfect so make sure you're being honest with your significant other because that's the only way they're gonna know so okay 11 is it too much is too much discharge a bad thing now I'm gonna actually insert a picture like somewhere right here I actually found this chart really helpful because um for a while I thought there was something wrong with me and, like, I thought, like, um, having too much discharge is normal? Is it not normal? Like, I thought there was legit something wrong with me until I seen this chart. And I'm like, oh, this is really helpful. So definitely, like, when I, you know, when you guys see this chart, definitely make sure you're paying attention to, like, the color of it and stuff like that. But it is definitely normal, guys. Um, that's really all I have to say about that. <clears throat> My voice is, like, really horsey. I don't know why. Okay, 12. When is the right time to lose your virginity? Okay, there is no, no time limit to lose your virginity. There is no time limit for your first kiss. When, when is the right time is when you're ready, when you feel the most comfortable, when you feel like you're at your best mindset to make that 
important decision. And it is an important decision. It is something that could change your life forever. And the reason why I say that is because you cannot get that back. You can absolutely not get that back. Whoever you decide to do it with, whether it's a friend, whether it's a best friend, whether it's a significant other that you've been with for five years, whether it's somebody close to you, you cannot get that back. And make sure you're making the right decision before you, like, don't let nobody, nobody peer pressure you. Don't let nobody peer pressure you. Because when it's your time, that's when it's your time. Um, I lost my virginity when I was 17. And I feel like I made the best decision of my life because I've been with this partner. And you guys seen him. His name is Matthew. I've been with him for five years. And that was like, he made me feel so comfortable. He made me feel, he didn't peer pressure me. He gave me, I, I literally waited a whole year and he still respected me. He still respected me because of my decision. And I was so happy because I've dealt with so many guys that like try to peer pressure me and this time a third, just like just to wheel you in. Don't let nobody peer pressure you. I'm so thankful my boyfriend never peer pressured me. And honestly, I, I'm happy with the decision and the age I picked. But there is no, no time limit to losing your virginity. Whether you're 20, whether you're 40, whether you're freaking 15. I don't prefer you losing your virginity at a young age just because of the circumstances. Whether if you're using protection and if you're not doing anything right. And sometimes the condom can break and you could get pregnant. And then, then you're suffering. <laughs> um, so I definitely would say there's no time limit. Just make the right decision and don't let nobody peer pressure you. 13. Do you think shaving every day is important? Okay. I honestly feel that shaving is important, but I feel like a lot of females follow social status. Like, there's so many females that can't go to the beach because they have like a little bit of hair on their leg, or they can't go, they can't go out without shaving, or anything like that. It is okay not to shave. I honestly think it's okay. Some females prefer having hair, and that's perfectly okay. I personally don't prefer having hair on my body just because it just builds up, and it just gets annoying, and it gets itchy, and I just feel gross. I prefer to take care of my, you know, my height, hygiene part of that, and make sure I'm taking care of my armpits and my legs and my vaginal area and anywhere else I have hair. Um... Because it is important, but it isn't important. It's just, it just really depends who you are as a person. Like, I don't know. As long as you're, like, washing your body and you prefer, like, having hair, that's perfectly okay. But I don't really genuinely think that it's really, like, really important. A lot of people just like to follow social, the stat, social status of it. And, like... It's sad because, like, females can't even go outside without getting judged for, like, a little bit of hair on their body. It's crazy to me. But this is the world we live in. <laughs> okay. Is going 14. Is going to the OBGYN yearly important? Now, I don't know who asked me this question, but absolutely, freaking lutely It is so important to be going to a yearly checkup at your OBGYN because one to make sure that you don't have any like type of like PCOS infertility issues like anything like that um, any cysts uh, any abnormal bleeding anything that's not normal in that area should be checked and you're not a doctor and your OBGYN should be checking you yearly and I know it's a scary doctor to go see but you got to do it this is a part of life, and going to the OBGYN is one of the most important, important doctors to go see, especially as a female. Um, because cancer can happen, and other issues can happen. It is just so freaking important. So make sure you're going to the OBGYN yearly. Alright, next question. What birth control I use? So, actually, I have my birth control right here. This is the birth control I use. It is called, um, what is it called? Genelfi, um, 1.530. 
this is how it looks. I take the pill, and I actually use this. I never wanted to be on birth control because of all the stories, like the horrific stories I heard. Um, I'm on birth control because of my PCOS. I take three weeks of hormones, and then the brown pills, as you guys can see, is when there's no hormones, and that's when my period's supposed to come. So, I take birth control because I had an irregular period. I didn't have it for seven months, and... This is what helps me have my period and I ovulate and things like that. So birth control, it has like its goods and its bads. It just depends who you are. I thought I was going to hate it because of like the acne and this. Th I do have bad symptoms. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't. But I deal with them because I know that this thing is helping me. Some people just take it just to take it for their own protection. But I take it because of my health stuff and for my own protection. So, that's the birth control I use. 16. How to wipe your vajayjay. <laughs> I don't know if your mom never taught you, but I'm going to be your big sister today. Usually, it's supposed to be front to back. Not back to front, because back to front, you, you, know, you do your little thing back there. And if you wipe to the front, you can get an infection. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely front to back just because it is a much safer way, number one. And if you're doing back to front, you can get an infection. And that's that. <laughs> okay. 17. How do you deal with ingrown hairs? Um, this is actually a really good question. Usually... People say, like, if you're dealing with ingrown hairs down there, they usually tell you to put, like, take a warm shower or a warm bath, uh, put a warm rag on yourself. Um, if you're having, like, really, really bad pains, then take, like, painkillers or something like that. Um, and make sure you're not irritating it or touching it or squeezing it or anything like that. Honestly, like, you touching it could cause, like, an infection. Or like, and then you're going to have to go to the doctor and they're going to have to do all this stuff to you. So yeah, that's how you do. But if you're talking about like body ingrown hairs, just don't irritate it. It's the same way down there. Just don't irritate it. Put a warm, take a warm shower or put a warm thing on it and you'll be a-okay and it will go away. Okay, last questions. Does females get facial hair? I'm so glad somebody asked this because I'm a person that suffers from that. And there are some females that get facial hair. I get facial hair. I get face I get hair here and I get hair here. And it's perfectly normal. Honestly, it's normal. I have PCOS. That's why I have facial hair. But there are some females that have like facial hair but they don't have anything like imbalanced with them, if that makes sense. So it is normal to have for females to have facial hair. So no judgment to them because it is a very hurtful thing to point out something like that and call them like, oh, I think you were meant to be a boy because you have facial hair. No. There's just things that people don't search up and people don't understand why females have facial hair. So point blank. But this is answering your guys' questions about female hygiene and sex. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I answered each and every one of your guys' questions and I hope you guys definitely give me more Girl Talk videos because I love doing these type of videos and being your guys' big sister. But I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!